just getting ready to get started. It is now eight o'clock. Getting ready to get started. It is now eight o'clock. So we're getting ready to get started. It is now eight o'clock. So we're back at it again. A little bit of time to get ready to join us. All right, Mother Nixie, God bless you. All right. Brother Anthony, God bless you. Good to see you. All right. Get a few more minutes to get started. We're going to be studying from a few verses tonight. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. And uh, we're going to actually go to Second Timothy. Those that have your Bible, if you will go to 2 Timothy. Hallelujah. Amen. Right. We're just going to wait one more minute, and then we're going to go get into it and go to the teaching. We want to just try to keep this brief and uh, give time for comments, if there are comments, and others to join and uh, share your thoughts. If you put, do put a comment in and I miss it, I will try to go back and catch it, okay? Uh, but we're going to get started right now. We're going to pray. Father God, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for giving us another day of life. We thank you for giving us another day of strength. Father God, we thank you for just covering our homes, covering our families, giving us our right minds, giving us strength in our bodies to be able to go out and take care of what we need to take care of, do what we need to do. And still, at the end of the day, give you praise, give you glory. Father God, we ask that you anoint this Bible study, that it opens the minds and hearts of many men, women, boys, and girls. Those that know you, those that don't know you, that will desire to know you, that they will come to the revelation that Jesus is King and that he is Lord, and surrender themselves to your precious Holy Spirit. We thank you right now. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, everyone. So we're going to get into the Word. We're not going to delay. Uh, we're going to get into the Word and look at 2 Timothy, the third chapter. And again, we are studying what the Bible says about studying. Uh, studying about what the Bible says about studying. So in the Bible, it's 2 Timothy, the third chapter, and at the 16th verse... It reads as such, and it says this. Actually, I'm going to go back up to the 14th. It says, But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, and which were able to make these wise unto salvation, through faith, which is in Jesus Christ. Then the 16th verse says, All of scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for the doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect. Thoroughly furnished unto all good works. But then I kept reading that I, I saw where Paul said and switched a little bit in chapter 4. He said, I charge thee, therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. And then he tells Timothy, preach the word. Be instant, in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, extort with all long suffering and doctrine. Third verse there in the fourth chapter of Second Timothy. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap unto themselves teachers having itchy ears. So let's go back to the third chapter, Second Timothy, and the 14th verse. It says, but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned. Continue thou in the things which thou hast learned. 
And church, I want us to know that God wants us not just to study the word, but to know the word, to live the word, to do the word. Paul is saying continue in the word. A lot of times we get started, we have a good start, but we don't finish good. Uh, God wants us to finish strong, work strong, stay in the word strong, continue studying, continue learning, continue growing. Uh, a lot of us think that once we say, uh, you know, I, I received the Lord Jesus Christ into my heart, uh, he's the Lord of my life, and that's it. No. God wants us to continue to study his word. He wants us to continue to grow, to continue to develop. Uh, no child, uh, once you get, give them milk, that's not enough. They need to continue to drink milk. They need to continue to wean off the milk and eventually take on solid food. And so God wants us to do that well. And then he says he transitions from that 14th verse where he's pushing him to believe and continue in what he's learned, continue in his study. And then he says, and that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures. What has happened to us teaching our children the word of God? What has happened to us teaching Sunday school? What has happened to the young people? They're not showing up like they used to. We're not uh, dragging them to church anymore. We're not compelling them to know God's word. Uh, and we wonder why all these tragic things are happening by the hands of young people. People who don't know who Jesus is. People who never grew up in the church. People who don't understand that they've allowed sin to take control. And even open up the door for demons and devils. Uh, to run rockshot all over their life. We got to get them back into church. We got to get them back to God. And so God wants us to um, take that, take the word and share the word, even with the children. He says, and that from a child that thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee, what? Wise. The scriptures can make us wise. Wise of what? Unto salvation through faith, which is in Jesus Christ. It says, from a child, thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make these wise unto salvation. See, we got to understand the word of God will make us wise unto eternal life. It's not just I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, but when God gives us life, we have to use this life to learn the word of life, which is eternal life in God. The word will give us wisdom to know how to live a holy life, how to live a, sac a sanctified life, separated from sin, separated from other things in this life. God wants us to have a life uh, that is rich and full of joy and happiness. Uh, and which can only be brought on by and through the Lord Jesus Christ. From a child, we should be getting the word. Uh, from a youth, we should be learning God's word. We should be understanding what God's word is and what God's word is about. And then he writes in 2 Timothy 3 and 16. Uh, some people want to separate the red words from the black words. and Separate this chapter from that chapter. This testament from that testament. But this text says all scripture, the whole book, all scripture, is given by what? The inspiration of God. Some people want to say, well, oh, the word of God is written by men. Uh, it got me, God does, and he has, and he shall use men. But this word, was given by the inspiration of God. God's inspiration, God's breathed word, God's revelation of his, of his word was given into the hands of the writers that wrote, amen, the scriptures, that wrote the word of God for you and for me and for others that were before us and others that will be after us. 
The scripture is good. Every word of it is good and is profitable. It says, and it is proper for doctrine. That's studying the, and understanding the doctrine of God. Uh, his stance on things of this life. The doctrine of God, of who his son is. The doctrine of God, of who his Holy Spirit is. The doctrine of God, of who man is. The doctrine of God, of, of what the, uh, the enemy is. The doctrine of God, of his stance on sin. And everything within that. And so we have to understand that that, amen, is good for all of us. Amen. Good for reproof. Good for correction. Good for instruction. In what? In righteousness. And we need instructions in righteousness. We need instructions in knowing the word of God. We need instructions in knowing how to live for God. A lot of times we go through troubles in this life and we feel alone. We feel like we're isolated. We feel like um, things are, are separating us from others and trouble. Nobody understands the trouble that we go through. But I want you to know God knows what you're going through. And his book, this book, the Bible, gives us instructions to live holy and live righteous even in the midst of storms, even in the midst of trials, even in the midst of tests, even in the midst of Whatever it is that you could be going through, it gives us instructions. And it says that the man of God may be perfect. God wants to perfect us. Amen. His word is what's needed to perfect us. His word is what's needed to sharpen us. His word is what's needed to develop us. His word is what's needed to strengthen us. Uh, that's what's so important about God's word. Because it allows us to mature and to reach a level of perfection in him. Not that we uh, become sinless, but we, we do sin less as a Christian, as a believer in God. See, there's the old man, the old you. Before you knew God, before you gave your life to God, uh, you would do anything and everything. You had no limits. You had no uh, qualms about lying, no qualms about cheating, no qualms about stealing. Uh, you you do anything and everything. Uh, you had no control. Didn't want no control. But when you found Jesus, uh, you became a new creature. You didn't seek to sin. You didn't. You don't seek to do wrong. You don't seek uh, to do bad things. You don't seek uh, to be in the pit of sin and shame. But you seek to receive. The, the holiness and the glory of God in your life. Uh -huh, because you got a new life, a new standard, a, a new walk in God. And so God wants you and I, he wants us uh, to know that his word is good for the perfecting of our lives. Uh, just like he worked on Moses, he can work on me and you. Just like he worked on Noah, he can work on me and you. Just like he worked on Job. God can work on me and you. And our lives can be a living testament to the power of God. So the book, amen, in 2 Timothy 3, it, it talks about how the word of God is to be given from a youth. And as we grow and we develop, the word is given and it's profitable for us to uh, be, to give correction. That's what reproof is. It's profitable for us to give correction direction. That's doctrine. It's profitable for us to be able to give correction. That's what the word of God says. And it's profitable for giving instructions in righteousness. You got to be taught it. Then after you taught it, Paul then transitions and says, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead and is appearing in his kingdom. Then he tells Timothy to do what? Not only teach the word, but preach the word. Be instant in season out. That means when people want to hear you and when they don't want to hear you. Preach the word. Teach and preach the word of God. Of God. He says because it will reprove. It will rebuke. It will exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Hallelujah somebody. 
It says, then and for a time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. They, but, but they will lust after their, uh, in the heat to themselves, teachers having itchy ears. There's so many people right now that are running to people um, just because they want to name it and claim it. I want you to know God has all things, but more than just name it and claim it. I want my soul to be saved. I want God to work on me. I want God to make me right uh, and, and to develop me into what he wants me to be for his life. And that's what I desire from God. I want God to give me correction when I need it because I ain't perfect. I, I don't know no perfect man but Jesus Christ. And so we all need to be rebuked sometimes. We all need to be corrected sometimes. We all need the word of God to guide us at times. Amen to that. Amen. I'm glad to see uh, Elder Tony Peavy with us. Amen. God bless you, sir. And so the word of God is so good. It's so powerful. It's so quick. Amen. And so I want to just kind of look real quick and see what we got here. Amen. Thank God for Jesus. Amen. Uh, Mother McSee, we got Brother Anthony. Uh, my wife is with us. Amen. Uh, Sister McGee had joined us. All right. Sister Rhonda, God bless you. We love you too. Amen. Sister Robbie and Bilma, we love you. Amen. It says, that's right, Pastor. Know the word. Live in the word. Be doers of the word. Hallelujah. Amen. Sister Clark had joined us. Amen. God bless you. Mother uh, McSee says, yes, from a child, we should be getting the word. That's right. Uh, we got uh, Bridget Merriweather that joined us. Janita Hurd joined us. All right, Sister Kay Beck joined us. He says, uh, Sister Mary says, thank you, God, and praise, how, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Stay blessed. Amen. God bless you, Pastor. Thank you for sharing the word of God. The word means Jesus. Too much tragedy and crime. Because they refuse to follow God. That's so true. Amen. I will talk to you. God bless you. Amen. All right, mother. All right. Amen. I thank you all for just staying on here with us. I, I do want to try to wrap up, but... There's so much in the word of God to share with everybody. Uh, and Timothy, it shows us that we need to be taught the word. It shows us that we need to learn the word of God. Then it shows us that we need to implement the word of God and it's teaching it. But then uh, as I was praying, the, the Lord had drew me to Hebrews 4 and 12. And in Hebrews 4 and 12, it says, for the word of God is quick and powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing and even dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit, of the joints and the marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Wow. Ella, Tony P., we start at 8 o'clock on the dot. 8 o'clock on the dot, 8 p.m. That says to us in Hebrews that the word of God not only is good for teaching us and correcting us and instructing us, but the word of God, when we study it, it penetrates deep uh, into our souls, that it discerns the thoughts and intents of the heart. Uh, it brought my mind back to the Sunday school lesson last week when Simon the sorcerer uh, was following after Philip. And when the apostles came, Peter and uh, I believe James, when they showed up to town and began to lay their hands on the people that were baptized, received the Holy Ghost. The Bible says that Simon saw this and said, give me this power. Uh, you know, he hit, took his money out and Peter basically told him, uh, you can take your money and go to hell because you can't buy the Holy Ghost. Why? Because then Peter saw that he had bitterness and guile in his heart. 
and that his heart wasn't right, and that he needed to pray to God to forgive him of that sin that was in him. The word is sharper than any two-edged sword, and when you have the Holy Ghost, you're able to discern, amen, through the power of God, the hearts of people. You're able to discern with the power of God, amen, things that people may have hidden as agendas, uh, but God is able to show you, God is able to reveal to you those hidden things. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, see, we look on the outside, but it's God. God's word. He's the word. Jesus Christ is the word. The Bible so many times talked about how Jesus, the word of God, could see the thoughts. He knew what they were thinking. He knew what they were co contemplating about him. And he spoke to them before they even opened their mouths. What a God we serve. Am I right? God is just so amazing. And so his word, it penetrates. His word goes deep. It says that it's sharper, it's quick and powerful. Quick and powerful. Before you are done thinking it, God already knows. But before you're done saying it, God already knows. And not only that, the word of God is powerful. The word of God can shut some things down. It was the word of God that calmed the, the storm on the sea. That's how powerful God is. It's the word of God that was so powerful that it set the stars in the heaven and the moon in the night. The word is so powerful that it separated light from darkness. That's how powerful this word is. The word, it says it pierces so deep, dividing asunder even the soul and the spirit. My God, can you even imagine that? We have trouble understanding who our soul is and what our spirit is. But the word of God separates even the soul and the spirit. That's finer than the, the hair that you can't even see on my head. Uh, it, it's finer, it's sharper. It cuts so quick and it cuts so deep that God can see uh, the sinner man from the one that received the new man. God is able to see the separation of, of the two people that war, amen, that wants to do wrong, and the one that wants to do right, God can cut through and see all of that inside of you and me. Amen. But I'm so glad that we got a helper, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, amen, is able to help starve that old man, the flesh. But at the same time, this word is feeding the new man. This word is strengthening the new man. This word is making us strong so that we can fight against sin so that we can live a holy life so that we can show others that God is real and that God, amen, is so real that he can save them from themselves. He can save them from a burning hell. It says that even the joints and the marrow and is a discerner of thoughts and intents of the heart. God's word is so powerful, church. God, God's word is so amazing. Amen. It's just humbling to understand that. And then, and we're almost finished. James 1 and 22. James 1 and 22 says, But be ye doers of the word of God, and not hearers only, deceiving your own self. So many people are able to quote scripture. So many people are able to just recite things and, uh, and tell you what the Bible says. But I want you to know, even the devil knows the word. The devil knows the Bible. But what's the difference? The difference is uh, that you do the word. Don't just speak the word, but do the word of God. Live the word of God. Don't fool yourself. This is a walk. This life is a walk. We got to use the word of God as a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path so that we can uh, walk as we talk. Uh, not doing our own agenda, but doing God's agenda. Not doing our own thing, but doing it God's way. Amen, somebody. And so we want to be doers of the word and not hearers only. I didn't say that the Bible did. We don't want to be just uh, hearers, but we want to be doers 
of God's word. Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. Deceiving your own selves. Then it goes a little bit further. It says, for if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goes his way and straightway and forget what manner of man he was. I don't want to forget what I was. I know what I was before God changed me. I know what I was before the Holy Spirit fixed me. I know what I was before the Word of God worked on me. And so the Word of God is so important, so powerful. Amen. And we need to study God's Word. We got to go deeper into studying His Word because when we study His Word, it gives us life. When we study His Word, it gives us direction. Uh, I can't be a blessing to somebody if I don't know the words to be a blessing. Amen. And then Psalms 119 and 11. And this is the last one. The psalmist writes, Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. And that's the whole thing. Y'all. We want to keep God's word in our heart, that we might not sin against the Lord. We got to keep God's word in our hearts so that we can stay pure to the word of God. Amen. And do what God is asking of us every single day. There's so many people that are looking at you and look up to you. So many people are watching your life. And uh, the enemy would like to tarnish your reputation. More than that, he likes to tarnish God's reputation. And he'll do that, try to try to use you. But when we study God's word, when we learn God's word, God will show us traps he will show us when the enemy's trying to trick us into doing something that a Christian should not do. God's word will help strengthen us so that we can walk the way he wants us to walk. Do what he wants us to do. Not just hearers, but doers of his word. Amen. And so we're about to close in just a moment. Amen. Mother Lucy says, do and live the word of God. Nothing is hidden. That's right, Mother. Nothing is hidden. You, Sister McGee. All right, we had uh, Pastor Brown, like he had joined us for a little while. Amen. Uh, Deacon Bell, thanks to Bell, joined us. Amen. All right. Does anybody have any questions? Anything you want to say? Um, this is an opportunity before we get ready to end the Bible study for the night. Again, I want to say thank you. I appreciate everyone joining us and being part of this Bible study. I hope that you are learning from this and feel inspired uh, to get you over through the week. Uh, Wednesday is, is normally known as hump day. And so we want to get over the hump. Amen. God bless you, Pastor. Amen. Thank you for that light. All right. Uh, thank you, Mother. Amen. God bless you. We want to get over the hump. We want to get to the next level in this life. Amen. Amen. All right. Yeah, God can use you even on the job. To save somebody's life. And see, that's the most important thing. We don't want to just take God with us on Sunday. I want God to be with me on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then definitely on Sunday. I want God to be with us every single day. Uh, When we got the Holy Spirit, he'll guide you. He'll show you. He'll give you quickness of thought, quickness of mind. Uh Uh-huh. Because uh, we are the hands of God. Whether you know it or not. When we belong to the Lord, we are his hands. We are his arms. We are his mouthpiece to men and women. Uh, God uses us in such mighty way when we keep him first. When we sacrifice and love him and and, uh, adore him. Keep him priority in our hearts, in our thoughts, in our actions. So that he gets the glory. Amen so much. Again, I just want to say thank you all for joining us, being with us on this evening. I pray that the Lord be with you. We're going to pray our way out of here and so you can enjoy the rest of your evening. Amen. We hit that 30-minute mark. All right. All right, Elder. He said, that's why I sing, Lord, I'm available to you. Hallelujah. Yes, I'm available to you. That's a good one. Uh Uh-huh. When we sing, Lord, I'm available, he'll, he'll make sure we're available. He will use us. And so that's a great thing. 
Hey, Amen. Every time I get work, I feel my patient feels better because they know they're in good hands and they feel better. Hey, Amen. All right. Hey, Amen. We're at that 30 minute mark. We're over that mark. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just want to say thank you. We thank you for everyone that joined. We thank you for everyone that will watch this even in the future. And Father God, I pray that you bless every single person, whether they own for 30 seconds or 30 minutes. Father God, touch them right where they are. Father God, I pray that you'll bless and stretch forth from California to Illinois to Wisconsin to New York to Arizona around the world to India to Afghanistan to Pakistan to Africa and back to Europe all over to uh, Japan to the Philippines wherever you are God you just bless right now everyone that watches you bless right now Father God we are keeping your word first continue to bless it continue to send it so that men and women can give their life to your son Jesus Christ and receive salvation, receive eternal life. And we thank you right now until we meet again at the appointed place and time. Keep your angels encamped around about us. Guide us on the highways and the byways as we make our way throughout this week. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Thank God. Amen. All right, amen. We thank God for every single one of you. Have a great evening. We love you. With the love of the Lord, be blessed. God bless you. Bye-bye.